zero g one of the advantages is you can float up into the nooks and crannies that are very difficult to reach on earth and they're very easy to reach on orbit one of the disadvantages is you've got to remember to brace yourself uh, quite well when you're using the tools it didn't do any good to outweigh the wrench by 185 pounds zero g but uh, we did change them out successfully and had three forward display units for entry and landing It was along about the same time that we were doing the IFM that we discovered we had the icicle on the dump port. And uh, at this particular time, we just were going to go out and break it off. Uh, Judy came up and handled the communications and kept me honest with the, the RMS while we were doing this task, double-checking on the procedures. The ground orbiter to try to excite the mast. We found it to be very stable, showing only small deflections that damped out very rapidly. And we were able to maneuver quite nicely uh, to different attitudes with the array out. Here we're coming across Baja. Uh, one of the things that we noticed about the array was uh, that it was translucent so we could see uh, both the sun and the earth going by behind it as uh, we were maneuvering. All in all it was a good flight test for large space structures with potential future use in either space-based construction or in space station operations. And it's also a potential prototype of an inexpensive power source in both dollars and weight uh, of the future for NASA. And we spent a lot of time uh, taking photographs with the various cameras that we had on board uh, of the operations of the mast. Here you see it extended to 100% uh, with the intermediate tension bar, the, the white bar across the bottom. And in this uh, closing shot, we have a sunset. Uh, we can see the sun shining through the array. We were tail sun at that time. And when you see the shadow of the vertical tail on the left bottom portion of the array. It wasn't all work. Uh, here's Judy and Steve playing a little handball with our flight mask. Here we are sitting down for supper. Uh, we had trays. You can see some of the food stuck to the back there. Uh, we had trays that we could position on our laps, Velcro, and then uh, set our food in them. As Steve pointed out, this uh, zero gravity adds new meaning to the term past the potatoes. They float them all the way across the cabin. The menu was uh, quite varied and uh, really pretty good. People accused me, we had color code, and people accused me of always having my color on everything. <laughs> Exercise was part of our daily routine on orbit, uh, just like it is back here on Earth. Getting set up on the treadmill takes a little bit longer on orbit, and our sleep arrangements looked a lot like a summer camp. A little bit of bunks here and there. Two of us slept anchored to lockers, two of us slept strung across the room, and two of us slept on the wall. And you notice that in zero G, when you relax, your arms tend to float up. It was very comfortable. We didn't always sleep with the night light on. That is to, all good things must come to an end, and you can see some thunderstorms sticking up in the, the limb of the Earth there on the horizon. Sunsets from space are absolutely beautiful. You've heard us say this many times. It's still true, and it's difficult to capture all the color on camera. At 300 feet, Mike put the gear down. That was a good sound to hear that coming down. And uh, we bring it in then for uh, going down closer to the runway where we break the rate of descent even further. The orbiter flies extremely well. I was quite pleased with it. It's a good, solid handling airplane. Brought it in for a landing that we were all proud of and uh, about 185 knots, started the nose down. The nose went down per normal. Uh, to us, it seemed like it really banged down hard, but it always does because of the negative angle tack you have. Braked it to a stop. Took us, I guess, 25 or 30 minutes to get the orbiter shut down. The thing about the orbiter is you're not through flying until you get it all shut down. That takes a while. Got our legs under us and came out and looked at it. It was an extremely clean airplane, as you've probably seen in the pictures. It came through in fine style, minimum tile damage, and the systems on board were in extremely good shape. So we're real proud of it. It's a welcome addition to our fleet. We now have a three airplanes in our national transportation fleet.
And I think that we're in a position now that the agency can really go get serious about flying.